And this is the IBC container that uh, I make my biogas digester out of. These particular ones come with AdBlue in them, which is a diesel additive with, um, it's made out of urea, which is actually a fertilizer when it's diluted. So what's actually in there, undiluted, it can be corrosive, but when you dilute it, it becomes a fertilizer. So it's, it's a good thing to have your uh, biodegast digester made out of, because we've got fertilizer coming out the bottom of it. And if there's still a little bit of urea in it, so much the better. Now, as these come, they're a thousand litres and they have a tap here and a connector. You can buy a connection for that and they have an inlet here. You want to make sure you get one with a good quality O-ring and that that is smooth. Everything goes in and out through this and that. So I'm not, there's only one spot where I'm putting a hole in this, and that is where my poo input, my future poo input will go in. So you try and keep the minimum number of holes in this, which means minimum potential for leakage. And in Australian dollars, these come second hand for $110 or so. I made this device here so that Previously, I worked out just where this will go tight. And based on that, I've set this up so that any food or scraps put in through there comes in and goes to that part of the digester where the food goes in through there. And this stuff tap lubricant and uh, also for o-rings on the thread and on the o-ring so that it's all well lubricated and also helps provide an airtight seal around there on the seal so that we don't get any gas leaks so you want to get it up thoroughly tight this here you'll see as we pressurize it this will actually come up a little bit this is just a compressor you could just blow it up by mouth or any other sort of inflator and the water levels coming up in here now right up near the top there I've just got some dishwashing liquid in water here just looking for bubbling but the ultimate test is whether this liquid level is going down. If that liquid level is going down, then you um, you're going to get you're going to have a leak there. Bear in mind that the air that goes in here is probably not going to be the same temperature as the water, so it's probably going to expand or contract a bit when it first goes in. So that water level may go up and down, or may go down or up in the first half an hour or so see it's gone down a little bit now I might give it a little bit more give it time for the temperature in that to equilibrate so once it gets to it appears stable then you could just watch it for a few hours and see if it appears to be going down and that will tell you whether we're only testing as far as this tap um, but so far it's looking good I haven't seen any leakage and that's all looking good there. So when you get it all up and working you've got liquid fertilizer come out this end and you've got gas farts coming out the top end and that gas is about 30 percent carbon dioxide mostly methane and just a little bit of hydrogen sulfide. Um, now because you've got it in a gas bag with just some weights on it, the pressure is significantly less than what's in um, commercial gas. That typically operates at a much higher pressure. So what that means is in your gas stove, you're probably going to need to drill out. There's a jet in there that mixes the gas with the air. So because the gas is coming in at low, lower pressure, you may have to drill out 
the little gas jet so that you get enough methane coming in to get the right mixture of gas and air. My gas stove was designed to operate with biogas so I didn't have to bother but you can convert a camping stove to biogas just by drilling out uh, the jets and probably best off you you would be to experiment and just start by drilling it out a little bit, try it, drill it out a little bit more, try it again, drill it out a little bit more and if you can you should be able to buy spare jets in case you overdo it and drill it out too much and just find out what works best and bear in mind that it will depend on how much pressure you've got in your gas bag and it for, it seems that about that much water pressure is a good amount of pressure to have your gas bag work, working at so basically if you've got a gas tube sitting into water with the, the gas pressure it will push the level of the gas down to about that much below the water level and that's when you know it's about the right gas pressure and if you go to that much depth that's when you might decide to have it overflow when the gas escapes.